Welcome to lesson one of getting started on the bagpipes. Okay, this is a, uh, a brand new little YouTube course that I'm putting together. It's going to be 50 lessons that brings you all the way from knowing nothing about the bagpipes um, to knowing something about the bagpipes, all right, to being able to play a couple tunes. All right, um, you can take these lessons on YouTube like we're doing right now. Or um, even better, you can go to highlandbagpipe.com and uh, sign up for the free course there, okay? If you sign up for the free course at highlandbagpipe.com, uh, not only do you get all the videos that you get on here, but you get um, interactive sheet music and uh, just sort of a better layout of how to do this course, okay? But if you're more comfortable just doing it on YouTube, then just watch all these videos, okay? Um, so the, like I said, this is lesson number one. And in order to get started playing the bagpipes, there's one thing that we really, really need essentially, all right? We need a practice chanter. And to get a practice chanter, you gotta buy one. And there's a couple different th rules we need to follow when buying a practice chanter to make sure we get one that works well for us, okay? Um, we need to look at the length of a practice chanter. We need to look at the material, the brand, uh, the reeds, and where to buy it, okay? So I'm going to talk about all that in this video and I'll have a couple tips at the end too of maybe some additional things you should buy. All right. So first of all, uh, let's talk about the length of a practice chanter. There's really two different lengths you can get. You can get what we call a short practice chanter, sometimes called a regular practice chanter, um, or you can get a long practice chanter. Now this is a short practice chanter. Okay. And then this would be a long practice chanter, okay? You can see the difference in size. Um, you can really see the, the top parts are about the same, but the body you can see is quite a bit different, okay? This one uh, obviously is a lot shorter and this one's longer. This one is a little bit easier to play if, you know, if you're a kid, if you're like 10 years old or eight years old, or maybe even 12 or so, this might be a better option for you because the holes are just closer together. Or if you're somebody who's very short <laughs> or has very short fingers, this might be a better option because the holes are, are closer together, okay? Um, the advantages of getting a longer practice chanter are the spacing of the holes is much more similar to how it is on a real bagpipe, okay? so. When you're actually playing the real bagpipes, the whole spacing is very similar to how it is on a long practice chanter. Whereas on a short practice chanter, the holes are much closer together, which makes it easier for uh, learning when you're first learning. But when you have to transition to the bagpipes, um, it's the spacing is much wider, okay? So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're a very young person or a very small person, you might want to get a regular a regular or short size practice chanter. However, if you're a normal sized person, <laughs> uh, an adult, uh, I would make sure you get the long practice chanter because although it might be a little bit harder when starting, uh, it'll be much better in the long run because the spacing of the holes will be very similar to an actual bagpipe. All right? Okay. So that is the length of the practice chanter, right? Again, if you're a very small person, get a small one or a sorry, a short chanter or a regular size chanter. Uh, if you're an average size adult, I would get um, the long chanter. And again, the advantage of having the long chanter is that it allows uh, your finger spacing to remain the same when you're going from your practice chanter to the actual bagpipes. Whereas the short chanter, regular chanter, uh, it's much closer. Okay. Okay. The next thing we need to talk about is material. Uh, you can see, for instance, on this practice chanter again, uh, it is uh, made of plastic, all right? You can either buy a plastic practice chanter or a wooden practice chanter. Uh, the advantages of a plastic practice chanter is it's more durable and it's cheaper. The advantages of buying a wooden practice chanter is it sounds a little bit nicer. Um, it feels a little bit nicer when playing, um, but they are quite a bit more expensive, okay? 
um, for you as a beginner, I would suggest buying a uh, plastic practice chanter um, because of price difference. And because, um, again, a plastic practice chanter you can drop on the ground. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and I mean, I just, I just wouldn't spend the extra money for a wooden one until you're absolutely 100% sure um, that you're going to play the bagpipes in the long run. Okay. It might be something uh, I know a lot of most people when starting the uh, bagpipes start off with a cheaper plastic practice chanter. And then, you know, a year or two into it when they're, um, when they've been playing for a long time or not a long time, when they've been playing for a year or two, you know, for Christmas or something, they'll get a nice, a nice, uh, wood one. All right. So for beginners, I suggest getting a, a plastic, uh, practice chanter. Um, as far as the brands of practice chanters go, um, before I made this video, I sat down and I was, I was kind of going through all the practice chanters I've used and, uh, which ones I've liked, which ones I haven't liked, which ones I've tried, which ones I haven't tried. And so I made a list, um, and the list of, of uh, brands that I like are McCallum, Wallace, Nail, Hardy, Gibson, and Dunbar. All right. Those are the ones I've tried and I really like. And I'll leave, uh, I'll leave all those names uh, down in the description so you can check them out. Um, those are all the ones I've used and I really like. Um, my favorite one is, is this channer, which is a nail, but it's fairly expensive. Um, it's a great channer, but it's, it's not cheap. Um, you know, this is, this is the channer I usually recommend for beginners, um, which is a McCallum and, and you can get them for relatively inexpensive. I think they're less than a hundred bucks anyways. Um, and they're a really great channer for the price. Uh, and all those other brands all make really good channers. Um, and there's a couple brands in there that I, I, I didn't mention. Um, uh, that doesn't mean necessarily they don't make a good practice channer. It just means I've never played their, their practice channer. Okay. So if you, if you go out and you're like, Oh geez, these guys seem like they actually make a really good one. They very well might. I've just never actually tried it. Okay. And I don't want to uh, recommend something I've never tried. Um, I'm also not getting paid <laughs> to recommend any of these brands or anything. These are practice channers, um, that I've all, I've, I've purchased or been given through a pipe band or something. Um, but uh, yeah, so those are all the brands that I do recommend getting. Um, and you can always, you know, buy them from their website or, um, or a store. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, as far as reeds go, um, you know, there's, there's lots of different types of, of bagpipe reeds or bagpipe practice channel reeds. You know, here's one right here. Um, they always kind of look a little bit different. Um, here's another one in here. Uh, they look a little bit different. You know, one isn't necessarily better than another one. Uh, it's just that some reeds sound better in specific channers. Okay. And usually when you buy a practice channer, I think almost all the time anyways, uh, they'll stick a reed in it. All right. And that's usually a reed that works really well in that practice channer. So when you buy your first practice channer and reed, I would just use the one that came with the practice channer. Uh, there very well might be another read that sounds better in that practice channer, but the maker has either suggested or actually put that specific read in to that practice channer, um, because it sounds good. All right. So I would just trust their judgment on that. So when you go out and buy a practice channer, it should come with a read that suits that practice channer. Okay. Now, um, where to buy, all right, where are you going to buy a practice channer? Uh, you can buy direct from the manufacturer if you want. Um, when you go down and see that description of all the different manufacturers, I recommend, um, you can go right to their website and buy a practice chair if you want. If you live, uh, in the UK or Ireland where most of this stuff is made, there's a couple of the makers are, in, are based in the U S and Canada. Um, that might be a good way to do it because they can just ship it right from their, uh, uh where they make all the practice channel straight to your house. And it's kind of nice because you're kind of directly supporting the business. Or you can go to a, um, a bagpipe uh, distributor uh, importer that's in your country. Okay. There's, there's a bunch of them in the U S there's a bunch of them in Canada. 
uh, there's a handful of them in England and Ireland and Scotland and Australia and stuff. And I'll leave um, in the links below, in the description below, I'll leave a couple links to some of the um, stores and stuff that I've used in the past and can recommend. All right. Um, where I don't recommend buying a practice channer is off of eBay or Amazon. There are a handful of good channers available on uh, eBay and Amazon. Uh, but there's also a lot of channers I don't recommend. <laughs> so it's just easier just to avoid Amazon and eBay, I guess, um, as far as buying a practice channer. Okay. Uh, there's, there's a couple very specific practice channers that are really, really bad um, that you can find on eBay and Amazon. If you see a practice channel that's less than, I don't know, less than 50 bucks, it is definitely um, one of those um, very poorly made practice channels, and you don't want to have to try to learn an instrument that's already hard on, a, a, on an instrument that's not very good, <laughs> okay? So just trust me when I say buy it from a, a bagpipe uh, manufactured directly or from uh, a bagpipe, a trusted bagpipe store. Okay. All right. So now we've covered uh, the length of the channel you should buy, the material um, that it should be made out of, uh, the different brands, the reeds, and where to buy a practice channel. There's a couple other things. When you're buying your practice channel, I recommend um, buying some hemp. All right. This is black wax temp. You can buy black wax temp. You can buy yellow wax temp. You can buy unwaxed hemp. Uh, it's kind of up to you. I, I like the waxed hemp myself. Um, I think it's a kind of a great thing to have um, in your toolbox. But you can also buy unwaxed if for some reason you prefer that. You're going to need hemp. Um, if you look at the bottom of these reeds, you know, there's some, there's some hemp on the bottom. And that allows you to sink the reed or lift it up when you're when you're actually tuning a practice channer uh, and then sometimes so there's hemp on this on this joint right most practice channers will have hemp that you have to make uh, that you have to put on here like this hold on you should never put the top of a practice channer on like that you always got to be careful so you don't damage the reed like this all right you want to make sure that's kind of snug and nice and comfortable when playing uh, so a lot of practice channers you need hemp for that some other ones, like this one, have some O-rings, so you don't actually need it, but you'll still need it for the reed. So I always suggest buying some hemp when you buy your practice channer. Um, and uh, buy some um, electrical tape. The thin little electrical tape is, is a little bit better uh, than the normal electrical tape. It just, you don't have to worry about it covering too much of a hole or another hole or something. The, so the thin stuff is the best. You can get it at places like Home Depot or ace hardware or um any kind of place like that you can also get it at the bagpipe stores um it's a little bit more expensive but it's you know at least you're getting the good stuff all right all right so again that's that's all the advice i have for you about buying a a practice channer um any one of those uh manufacturers i definitely recommend uh you know i recommend whatever read sort of comes if your practice channer is, is generally really good uh, length again if you're a normal sized adult you know get the long one if you're a really small person or or, uh, or a kid or something you know maybe get the short one um what else uh that's that's mostly it and I, again make sure you get uh this and this when uh when buying uh, your practice channer because you eventually have to get it uh, a metronome also is something you'll need for these for these uh classes uh, now you can get a metronome, you can buy a cheap one off of Amazon if you want, or, uh, like most of you, you probably have a smartphone. I would suggest just using, uh, an app on your smartphone for a metronome. They work really well. And yeah, so that's pretty much all you need to get started on these lessons. You need a practice channer, uh, a little bit of hemp, maybe some electrical tape, uh, and a metronome. All right. And you should be absolutely fine. And again, you can take, uh, you can take all these lessons here on YouTube, or you can sign up at highlandbagpipe.com uh, for the free course, Getting Started on the Bagpipes. Whichever one you want to do is great. Uh, I'm just really excited to get some people started playing the bagpipes. It's a great instrument. It's completely changed my life. Uh, I love it. And uh, most people I know um, who play anyways really seem to <laughs> love the bagpipes. All right. Okay. Uh, 
stay tuned for another video on uh, getting started on the bagpipes. Thanks for watching everybody. If you got something out of this video, I'd really love it if you could like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff really helps. It'll also be great if you could check out uh, the Highland Bagpipe Academy, which is at highlandbagpipe.com. Uh, all sorts of great resources there. Uh, I also have a Patreon um, where for as little as a dollar a month can go a really long way to help support me and this channel. Um, and you get uh, access to the videos early and some free tune books and all sorts of stuff out of that too. Okay, thanks so much guys.